still in Article 250. Here's another change that I'm really happy with. This is in 250.140 Clothes Dryers and Ranges. Um, for those of us that have had to deal with this, this has been a problem for a long time. And the reason this really became well known is the changes in 230.85. Remember that rule we talked about um, like back in, I don't know, 15 videos ago? The emergency disconnect for dwellings. We have to put the service disconnect outside now, right? Or if you don't put the service disconnect out there, you have to put a switch out there and pretend it's the service disconnect, put a sticker on it that says it's not the service disconnect. Okay. Once we part, once we part, <laughs> once we start putting the service disconnect on the outside, 250.140 becomes kind of problematic, and I'll show you exactly how. So this is having to do with grounding and bonding of closed dryers and ranges. The allowances for the connections of existing dryers and ranges were expanded. This is really nice work on the part of the code making panel. All right, closed dryers and ranges. Closed dryers, ranges, ovens, cooktops, they all have to be connected in accordance with A or B. All right, believe it or not, I mean, you have to kind of go some, through some history here. It wasn't until, I'm almost certain the 1993 NEC, could have been the 90, but I'm pretty sure it was the 93. It wasn't until then that you actually had to run an equipment grounding conductor to your range or dryer. Okay, back then, you could use a bare conductor as your neutral and connect it to the metal parts of the range or dryer. You do a three wire receptacle, right? Two hots and a bare wire that was not an equipment ground. It was the neutral, okay? So you'd use two hots and the neutral. Well, finally in the 90s, they said, well, that's dumb. We don't use the neutral for bonding metal objects anywhere else on the planet. Why would we use it for ranges and dryers? Touche, so they changed it. Now that works great if your building was built after 1995 or so, right? You got four wires to your range, four wires to your dryer, you're golden. Well, guess what? There's a couple hundred million houses that were built before then. So what do you do with all of these existing ranges and dryers that have a three wire feed going to them? Well, here's what you do. You just don't touch it, okay? If you buy a new range or you buy a new dryer, you buy a three wire cord and you plug it into your existing three wire receptacle and you go your merry way. Everything's fine. Okay, well, here's where the problem comes in. What if I'm doing a service change? Okay, so I've got a house that has just the meter on the outside, all right? And it goes into the service disconnect on the inside of the house, and that's the panel board, and that's where the range, uh, where the range circuit breaker is, and the dryer circuit breaker, right? It's all in that service disconnect that's on the inside of the house. Okay, let's, let's keep that installation in mind for a minute, all right? So let's keep on reading. A says, clothes dryers, ranges, ovens, and cooktops have to be connected to an equipment grounding conductor. Yeah, of course they do. New construction, obviously, you're running an equipment grounding conductor. Anything, you know, newer than 1993, you're running an equipment grounding conductor. But for existing installations prior to 1993, for existing installations without an equipment grounding conductor, <clears throat> the neutral conductor can be used to connect to the frame of the dryer or range if, let's keep reading, so that's what we have here, neutral and ground are connected together in the dryer or range and it's going to go to a three wire receptacle. <clears throat> here, the neutral and ground are not connected together. When you buy that range, you have to remove the bonding jumper and buy a four wire cord plug it into a four-wire receptacle, right, if your circuit <clears throat> has an equipment ground. So, the neutral conductor, existing installations, can connect to the metal parts if, <clears throat> if the circuit is 122.40 or 122.08, and the neutral conductor is not smaller than 10-gauge copper or 8-gauge aluminum or copper clad aluminum. Number three, Grounding contacts of receptacles furnished as part of the equipment are bonded to the equipment. Yep, there's a little strap we're talking about. And either one of the other, item four or item five, what it used to say is item four had to be the case. And this was the deal breaker in a lot of installations. Number four said the neutral conductor had to be insulated. Look, if you just had three wires going to your dryer, it wasn't insulated. It was a bare neutral conductor. So that's out. 
neutral conductor had to be insulated or part of an SE cable that originates at the service equipment. <clears throat> okay, well, if your house has the meter on the outside, service disconnect on the inside, and you got your two pole 100 on the inside, you got your two pole 50 for two pole 40 for your range, two pole 30 for your dryer, right? And you use SE cable out of that panel to the range or to the dryer, well then you're in good shape, right? You met item four. But what happens if you do a service change and you put the service disconnect on the outside of the house, right? Because of 230.85. Well, now this installation that used to comply is magically non-compliant. <laughs> okay, well, now you had to like, can you imagine? You're, you're, you're selling your customer a service change. And it's like, okay, listen, we're gonna put the service disconnect on the outside, which means we're gonna change the, the cable from a three wire cable to a four wire cable. And we're gonna change the location of the grounding electrode conductor. And the homeowner's like, okay, yeah, that sounds good, let's do it. And then the inspector comes out and he says, oh, by the way, I know this had nothing to do with the range or dryer, but you're gonna to have to repull the circuit that goes to the range and the dryer. Because guess what? That circuit no longer originates at the service disconnect. And the electrician and homeowner are like, uh, that dryer is 200 feet away through a finished basement. We ain't changing that. Uh, yes, you are. Problem, major problem. So now we added number five, okay? Or, so let's go back, 12240, 12208 volt circuit. Neutral conductors not smaller than 10 gauge copper, 8 gauge aluminum or copper clad. Number three, receptacles, grounding contacts are bonded to the metal parts. And number five, right, skip number four because we're not going to comply with number four. Let's read number five. The neutral conductor is insulated, no, or is part of an SE cable and is covered with listed insulating material such as tape or sleeving inside of the receptacle enclosure. Okay, awesome. So that means I can put some shrink tube around it and then we're good, right? Because you're not gonna be able to just insulate the conductor, right? It, it's, it's a bare conductor, you can't insulate it, but you can put shrink tube around it and make it comply. So now instead of having to rip out that cable, all we have to do is go in there and put a little bit of heat shrink tubing on it and we're good to go. So I'm so glad that they made this change here in 250.140B. All right, let's keep going to the next video. Okay, I'm back. Uh, it, it just dawned on me. I, I'm pretty sure I said receptacle enclosure. That should have been supply enclosure. So yeah, inside the supply enclosure, inside the panel, right? Not the receptacle, the panel. 